how to start a food truck in Dallas, Texas, and what do I need to have a food truck in Dallas? So in this video from Food Truck Freaks, we're gonna go through the list of what you need to get up and running. And this is going to be a list you're gonna wanna stick around from beginning to end of this video because we're gonna give you permits, licenses, and over 20 plus additional things you really need to think about before you start your food truck business in Dallas, Texas. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. We are YouTube's premier food truck business entrepreneur channel. We're gonna have everything you need to know about food truck industry to get your food truck up and running. We're gonna have information about cities and states all over the United States and additional resources on food truck wraps, food truck insurance, and everything else in between. So if this is your first video or if you're new, definitely hit the subscribe button and keep your eye open each week for all of our brand new videos. Hit that bell notification and you'll get notified of all of our brand new videos as they pop up. Give us a few minutes of your time and we'll educate you and inform you to help you get your food truck business going. So this is actually a question we have on our other YouTube channel. We actually have four food entrepreneur channels here on YouTube. We have those links, by the way, down in the description if you want to check them out. But on our other channel, Marketing Food Online, we had three emails and comments about how to start a food truck in Dallas. And actually, we had a couple comments here on Food Truck Freaks about specifically Dallas. So Dallas is actually one of the most uh, fastest growing cities for food trucks, believe it or not. It is catching on dramatically uh, because the, the minimal investment compared to actually a brick and mortar restaurant or cafe or, or bistro or you know eatery is much much less and yes you don't need to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a food truck you could yes incur that much if you were starting from scratch and in a brand new truck customized with all the bells and whistles and such but you can buy a used truck guys you can get one and have to maybe retrofit a couple items inside without getting into the two hundred thousand dollar range or even the hundred thousand dollar range so don't get discouraged if you have friends or family or people telling you that you need to almost be a millionaire to start a food truck that's nonsense so let's dive right into it specifically so dallas here's a few things you need to know and as a matter of fact we'll have some additional resource links down below in our blog we have a blog as well even podcasts that'll have these uh, permits and licenses. The first thing that they need is a current driver's license, okay? Now, th this may sound like a no-brainer, but believe it or not, a lot of food truck owners uh, try to start food truck businesses with driver's license that either expired or have been uh, canceled by the DMV or such. Now, you wanna keep in mind this, even though you're the owner, if you have an additional employee or you have a friend or brother or someone else who's helping you, always keep in mind who is driving your food truck. If your name is on the food truck you know, uh, certificate and ownership, Make sure that those around you who are helping you also have valid driver's license. Because if for one instance, like if, you know, my, my cousin said, hey, Damien, you know what? I'm not, I'll help you out. I'll, be, I'll drive the truck to the event. I'll meet you there. I can't get there on time, for instance, and I'll meet somebody there and they're going to take my food truck. I want to make sure that my employees are licensed properly and they have valid licenses. You need to also make sure that's true, too. Because if you don't, you can incur some serious problems if they happen to either get into an accident cause some damage or park somewhere and get a ticket. All of that's gonna fall back on you, the food truck owner. So make sure that you have a current driver's license in order to submit your application. And if you have anybody else driving it who may not be specifically on that application, make sure they're valid too. Next up, proof of six months liability insurance. So looking forward, outward about six months, you need to make sure that you've got a food truck insurance policy. That is also needed for you to submit an application for a food truck business in Dallas. That's one thing that they need. Um, so basically get yourself proof of insurance um, for your food truck before you apply. Number three, you need to have a license plate number. They're going to need that on the application. So once you get your food truck and you've got your plate, you need to ensure that you put that on the application. Dallas requires that. Number four, the VIN number. So of course, every vehicle, or truck, commercial or not, whether it's a personal use or what, you're going to have a VIN number. You got that vehicle identification number. Make sure that you put that on the application because in Dallas, they also require that specifically. Now, this is pretty kind of actually similar to a lot of cities. I've done a lot of videos on food trucks and these four right off the bat are actually <laughs> the same four things in other cities straight across the board. So it's kind of a normal, normal thing. Now, next up, a photo of the vehicle. Um, so you can basically take one either on your phone and then print it out, what have you, or send it in. But you need to attach that to the actual application. If you have multiple vehicles, let's say you've got two or three food trucks and you have a restaurant, let's say, and you've got multiple food trucks, you're going to need to do this on each one of them. Okay? They need to have an actual image of each vehicle. Next up, you need to have low propane gas permit if you're using that. What you'll have to do is actually contact the Dallas Fire Department Inspection Unit 
uh, for permitting, and you have to get basically an appointment. And what they're going to do is permit it, and I believe they also do an inspection, if I'm not mistaken. So if you do, if you use a low propane gas, uh, you're going to definitely need to have that as well. And a lot of times those are mounted too. Most part, those are mounted with generators on the external part of the vehicle too. If it happens to be different, you're going to let the fire department know. All right, next up, notarized commissary approval form. So you do need to, commissary visits are required daily. So they actually do require, this is something that's in most states, but actually not everywhere. And a lot of cities are the same as well, but again, not the same everywhere as also, is that certain cities will require you to be attached to kind of a commissary kitchen. You need to be attached to a specific commercial kitchen with an address. It has to be stationary. It's got to be there. It can't be a mobile unit. But your food truck has to be visiting there daily, obviously, because once you do a food truck event, you need to empty your dirty water, you need to take your trash out, you need to sanitize your truck, clean it up, and dispose of all the products that you have if it's expired, bringing your ingredients back in, and most of the time it's storage or stored at that commissary kitchen. So make sure you get that notarized commissary approval form when you submit an application in Dallas in order to get a food truck business started. Now let's talk about the fees. So they do have a mobile application fee. In Dallas, uh, Texas, for any food truck business that is conducting business there, they require a $121 fee. Now, I do believe that's actually an annual fee. So keep in mind, you need to have money set aside every year for all these fees because normally they're actually renewed on an annual basis. Okay. And next up is your permit fee. Yes, that is a separate fee unto itself. has nothing to do with the mobile application. That's $300. So, and again, I believe that's also a uh, one-time annual fee. So you may have to also renew that. So double checks as well for that. $300 a year for that. So those are some permits and fees that you need in order to apply to get the application submitted in Dallas. So the next step we're going to go through is this is a handful of things you really need to think of above and beyond what I just mentioned to you. You really need to check before you open a food truck. There's a lot of people who love to cook and a lot of people who are great cooks and maybe even a great chef. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have the skills to run a business like a food truck business, okay? So you need to check your experience in working in the food industry and see if you actually need some additional experience, maybe some courses on bookkeeping or accounting, uh, vendors, tracking expenses, just the business aspects of it. Because simply cooking on a food truck doesn't mean you're going to have a successful business. You're going to need to market it. You need to run the business day to days. You need to keep your uh, license and and permits up, up to date. There's a lot of other things to think about. So double check your experience working specifically in the food industry and if you're set for a food truck. All right, so your food truck business name. You need to check and verify that the name you chose for your food truck in your state is not already taken. So that's going to be a name verification. And by the way, you can even do this online too, guys. Uh, There's a whole bunch of websites. We've even got some additional links, like I said, down below. If you wanted to verify within your state and such, check out those links. You need to do a name search, okay? Next up, register your business. Uh, for your, obviously your business license in the city or county you're working in. So with any business, obviously, that you're conducting, including food truck businesses, you need to make sure that you register your, your business as a business entity and get that business license. Next up, open a business bank account for the food truck business itself. Now, you may have personal bank accounts. Do not recommend you tie those together. Now, a lot of times, simple LLCs or sole proprietorships for tax purposes and such, and of course, check with your accounting on this. Um, a lot of times they'll pass through all of that information through your social security and you should have a separate business account separate from your actual personal account. So if you have any transactions where you're buying stuff from vendors, re, re, uh, pay for vendor licensing and such, do that from a business account for your food truck business. Secure a POS system hardware. So every food truck needs to have some point of sale system hardware. That would be the ability for you to take debit or credit cards. And that's actually the mecha- that's actually the unit itself, the hardware. So the unit where you put the card in, the debit card or credit card, you need to get that, okay? Now, next up on the list was obviously applying for the POS merchant account. Keep in mind that getting POS system hardware is one thing. Having the POS merchant account is a totally different thing. That's the company that's going to process the payments. You can't just simply have the unit itself, the hardware, to take debit and credit cards. You need to process them, right? Next up, you need an application for your taxpayer ID. Now, your business, your food truck business, needs to also have its own taxpayer ID. You need to ensure that you get that. And I think that's actually needed before you even begin to open up and even start to sell products, even after you've had your inspections. You need to actually have that up and running, okay? So next up, food truck registration as a commercial vehicle. So in most cities and counties, you'll also need to register that specific vehicle as a commercial. It's not going to be a uh, personal use vehicle. And that's a big difference because the type of registration that the truck has may vary on the type of license you can get. Next up, obtaining a food handler certificate. Many cities and counties within 
the state of Texas, and I believe Dallas, if I'm not mistaken, they do this as well. They'll require a food handler certification course. And it's very simple. It's basically a course that you take a test so you understand how to prepare food, how to hold it, how to reheat it if you have to, store it, etc. keeping your, your truck sanitized and such. It's very good for you. And even if it doesn't require it for your employees, I highly recommend you do that. Next up, you need to make sure you have the correct type of driver's license. As I mentioned before, briefly, even though you have a valid license, you may potentially need to have a commercial license, which is a totally different type of license than just your personal everyday one. So check specifically in your city or county if you need that. Now, every city and county also, when you operate, may need additional business licenses. Now, if you're in Dallas, for instance, and you're starting there, and you do you go to another, another um, city or county within the state of Texas, um, you want to make sure that you don't need a business license because once you cross over to a new city, many states require that, by the way. And you're going to have to have multiple business licenses because you're technically operating a business in another city, which actually totally makes sense, to be honest with you. So you want to make sure that you don't need that if you do. A food truck insurance policy. All right. So food truck business, you're going to need to have insurance. And normally that cost, I believe it's on the low end, maybe around eight, nine hundred and up to about twelve hundred or fourteen hundred. Of course, that depends on the type of insurance policy that you need. Of course, I'm not a insurance agent, so I can't necessarily give you specifics on that. But I do know if you do need to have a food business uh, food truck policy. So check on that as well. Now, if you have an office, you're going to need obviously some furnishings, some desks, some different equipment that you may need, home furnishings and such in your home office. You, you can technically, you can have a home office. You can't necessarily park your food truck there. But if you're operating like the purchasing of vendor stuff and the day-to-day -day business things, uh, you could normally get away with that and you, you can actually use that for tax benefits too. But check with your accountant on that. So make sure you get that. Check market research in your area. So you're in Dallas. Yes, even though it's a growing, fast-paced food truck area, make sure you do a little research because if you're wanting to open up another taco food truck, for instance, and there's 12 of them in Dallas, I highly recommend you not do that unless you've got some amazing tacos that are completely different. You want to try to do something that might be popular, a type of food, but try to do a new take on it, something new spin on it, because just serving the same old thing, is not going to be really exciting and something unique, but do something that's unique about your particular menu. All right. So next up, you need to generate some investment funds. You are going to need some funds, obviously, to buy the truck, get it wrapped, customize it. There's a lot, obviously, that goes along. You want to check out your finances. Now, of course, you can check with family and friends. You can look uh, what type of credit cards you may have. I wouldn't recommend personally. I've done this. and I've gone down this road. Try your best to leverage other people's funds and, of course, have the ability to pay it back, not just borrow it. But using credit cards or cashing in 401ks, there's a big interest on that and there's a big risk. Um, you want to obviously to get some type of business line of credit. If you can do that off the bat based on your own personal score, then that's even better. You can apply for bank loans. Next up, you can actually get business startups through even SBA and such. Small business loans. Uh, SBA has a handful of loans started where you can do that for the food industry, including food trucks. So you want to look into that as well. Create an employee handbook. Now, this doesn't have to be something that's as thick as the dictionary, guys. It can be very simple. It doesn't have to be a really big book. But create a simple handbook is great because you're going to give your employees and those working with you an expectation. They're going to understand what is expected of them, right? And to be honest with you, if you're going to function in a food truck and you want it to grow and be obviously profitable, everybody needs to be on the right, same page and understand what they're doing. So that is a very simple employee handbook. And believe it or not, there's even websites where you can create these online for free. All right, now here comes some pretty cool stuff. Now you get to design a food truck logo. Keep in mind your branding concept. So if you want to create a food truck business in Dallas, you're going to need to have a logo for your food truck, obviously. And you may down the road start to sell merch, you know, like T-shirts, hats, backpacks, mugs, maybe any, anything that you could put that really cool logo on. So keep that in mind. Now you got to create the food truck, food truck wrap. Sorry about that. The food truck wrap. That's going to be the external part of your food truck. You want to keep in mind bright colors, easy to read, something that's eye-catching because if you're in a food truck event and you've got 20 other food trucks around you and you're the one who's sticking out because of your bright colors, a lot of people are going to be interested. Hey, what the heck is that guy selling over there? Look for something that's easily legible. The font, the style of the word and the text on the truck is easy to read. I would not recommend permanently putting your menu though on your food truck. Do it on a menu board because down the road, if you change or fluctuate your menu and you permanently have it on the side of your truck, there's no really way to change that, okay? So doing a menu board is really a no-brainer because you can, as the seasons change in Dallas, I know that's relatively hot year-round the year, 
But if you have different seasons, you need to roll with the punches and kind of check it out and see what you got and if you can change it. But you can't do it if you permanently put it on your truck. All right, next up, try to find an assistant, either sous chef or cook. If it happens to be a family member or brother, whatever it is, just find someone else who can cook the same things you make because you may potentially be either sick one day or maybe you're out of town. But if you can operate your food truck when you're not there or have someone help you operate it, that is fantastic. That's a great idea. So find someone who can cook the products that you make. All right, next up, you obviously need buy, rent, or lease a food truck. So if you're gonna get a food truck, guess what? You don't really need to buy one. There's actually the ability to rent or lease, and that makes really even better sense because you're not really gonna tie down to some type of vehicle note. Purchase all cups and cutlery accessories to eat and serve your food. So you're gonna need, obviously, keep in mind when you launch, you're gonna have to have small wares, it's known as. These are utensils, forks, knives, plates, napkins, and so on, right? Cups. Whatever your menu is, and however you present that, make sure that you obviously need that too. You're gonna need money up front for that. Next up, you need to have a website. Yes, every food truck should have a website and social media presence because you need to let people know more about your business, maybe even your schedule. If you create a local following in Dallas and people wanna know, hey, are you gonna to go to this event or that event? You can tell people where you're gonna be. You need to have an online presence. Now you may potentially need, and like I mentioned before, you probably actually will, fire inspection. So be prepared to have documentation and anything you need in order to have the local fire department come in and check you out and make sure that you're good to go. They'll have to sign off on your truck before you actually launch your truck. So those are a few things just to give you a heads up on as far as what you need outside of what I started with as far as what Dallas, the city of Dallas is gonna require for the application. If you have any information or you have any comments about opening a food truck business in Dallas, Texas, let us know down below. Check out these resources here as well. These are some additional resource videos. They'll help you get launched and we'll see you guys on our next video.